Coming up in this episode, we are going to discuss everything to do with the XC60 and its bigger brother, the XC90, uh, and anything else that comes to mind. So if you haven't clicked that subscribe button before, do so now. Yeah. So, I'm sitting here on the edge of the car uh, with a 4x4 Volvo. No problem. This is a 4x4, by the way. Um, it's all wheel drive. It's the new Volvo XC60. Uh, just gone on sale. Full of dynamism and, you know, all those other marketing things that they love. But I have to say, marketing around this has been spot on. It is a much more pleasant car to drive than the bigger XC90. Uh, I find the XC90 one of the most beautiful cars on the market, without doubt. It is incredibly pretty to look at. But it's quite disconnected from the drive. It's quite, it's quite like shut up and stay quiet and it'll just get you where you want to go. But this XC60, which was as dull as the XC90 in the older one, is now not dull really not dull i mean proper dynamic feel to the drive and and i hate using that word but actually yeah off road it's good on road it's good <laughs> it's very hard to flaw this but let's look through a few things where volvo is going right so number one volvo made some announcements recently which was they were going to make no more diesel engines i think it's 2020 or something they're not going to manufacture any more diesel engines and that's fair okay so they're not going to manufacture any more diesel engines it means they might buy some in but they're not going to make them right uh more taking a sheep this is the cura i'm sorry i had to cross the white line there over taking a sheep um so i get it they're not going to make any more diesel engines it's all going to be petrol or hybrid right or electric or you know a mix of all of those different versions of of uh, driving um, they're also going to bring in automated driving I, I imagine that Volvo is going to be fairly on the ball with the automated driving it's going to be relatively early with them and that's cool too that was a cattle grid that's not the suspension of the car and so here I sit in a car that has active cruise control and semi-active steering. It's not the most active steering I've ever been in. It's more vibration stuff when you reach a white line rather than actually steering through a corner for you. And the active cruise control is just reacting to the car in front, not to the street signs. Although I can see the road signs in front of me on a heads-up display, which is very good. Where this car begins to annoy a little bit is the system here in the middle this this touch screen affair we ha we really have to talk about touch screens because touch screens have a good and i understand we're used to ipads and phones and things where a touch screen is always involved uh, and that's okay but i'm not driving while using an ipad okay that's that's the really aggravating bit. And it's the same for Tesla. God damn it, that thing in the middle is like a 12-inch screen. It's like a television turned sideways. It's This needs to complement and enhance what I'm doing at this wheel. Until automated driving properly comes in, that is the only option we've got here. So when I, I've stopped now, I'm sitting in the traffic light. So when I'm sitting here at the traffic lights, I can touch things and it'll open and I get it, you know, I can see my playlist, I can see my map, I get all that, but on my phone as well, same sort of thing. But when I want to go to anything else, if I want to, look, if I want to change the system that's playing the music, so I want to go from MP3 on my phone, I want to go to radio. So I have to swipe this way and then I have to go thumb, right? Shut up. So I have a selection, I have am, fam, dab, 
radio favorites, Bluetooth, USB, and iPod, right? Um, but they're only accessible if I swipe to the left or the right. Now, if I swipe right, I get into car controls and some of the things I can turn on and off, like lane keeping aid, like ESC and sports mode, park assist, start, stop, all that sort of stuff. And so I don't really have that. That's, they hear that as well. That, but it's just as well that happened. So I wasn't going to crash into anything there. But the car has done that four or five times since I picked it up in the belief that I am going to rear end something and it has hit the brakes for me twice. Twice in that time. Neither time was I in any need of the assistance the car just thought I was. There it goes again. So it triggers, it's very, very sensitive. Nothing's happening. The car is just stopped in front of me at the traffic lights. But it's really ultra sensitive. I was very surprised by it. So the active city safe or city stop or whatever it's called in the Volvo system, that everybody's got a different name, is um, really active. And I mean really active, man. It's like jamming on the brakes all the time. Forgiving all that, once you get by, oh, I'm stuck at traffic lights again. Whose idea was it to come here to do this drive? Anyway, uh, once you get by all of the niggles, the little niggly things that really bother me uh, in modern cars, this is the best car that Volvo make. This is a glorious thing to sit and drive in. It's such a, I feel far more connected to the driving experience of this than I do to any of the XC90s. Um, Volvo really are getting it right. They really are going in the right direction. Storage in the cabin. Look at the size of that bottle. It fits straight into the cup holder. Straight in. No effort. Another cup holder in here in a glove box or uh, pockets in the door. And I have a flip up thing in the center. There's no sunglasses holder for the people who like that sort of thing. I do. I kind of like sunglasses holders. It stops them rattling around the cage. I hate rattles in a car. It drives me bananas. It's a car that someone sat down and kind of designed with me in mind. I like it. I really do like it. I just cannot... The only niggly bit is that touch screen that's just too many things going on. And I, I know that Tesla's gone that direction as well. I know that's all happening. But it's just... That is too much on one screen. Even, like, even the temperature controls. I can only change one side. Now he says, freaking out again, there's absolutely nothing on the road in front of me. It's doing it again. I even hit the bloody brakes that time. There's nothing out there. Sometimes it's oversensitive. And I think it's only available below 50 kilometers an hour, which, thank God, it's turned off again now. So I have active cruise control set there to cruise me along the road. And active steering is on as well. You could, like... You can relax when you're driving. I know now at this point I'm able to take the time to have a little glance at the screen here, but I can't rely on the systems all the time to do that for you. My attention should be focused out the window, not on a touch screen. But look at that. Chassis control is so good in this car. They've done such a good job. I can place those front wheels exactly where I want them on the road, and it really does hug it. And the steering is good it's active it feels nice it feels planted i have plenty of power plenty of horsepower to go with that this is the diesel engine of course this will be the last of the diesel engines that, that volvo actually make and put into a car it's the last hurrah we're in the last like four years three four years whatever it is left now before volvo give up making diesel engines uh, and putting them in cars and you'll find that everybody else is going the same direction as well more and more and more car companies will just stop making diesel engines and start putting their efforts into petrol and uh, and their derivatives of things. So can I really recommend the XC60 to you in Ireland? Yes, and not just Ireland. I just think this is a really class car. It's definitely one of the best looking in this segment, although the Tiguan gives it a damn good run for its money in certain specs. When you get the bigger tires bigger wheels on the Tiguan and that kind of R look the whatever R line they call it they call it R design and this but it's R line and Volkswagen when you put those two together god it'd be a tough choice between the two 
Volvo just edges it on detail and design, but this is a fairly high spec version of the car as well, so just bear that in mind. So to sum it all up, really, you've got a slightly compromised boot, although you can fit very square items into it, which is brilliant, uh, unlike a lot of boots which look big until you're actually putting things into the thing. Um, you've got a decent back seat, which can handle three adults within reasonable terms, long distance. The most comfortable seats I have ever sat on in my entire life are here with Alcantara in the middle of them and leather on the edge. They are just fantastically comfortable. Perfectly sized steering wheel for my hands. Lovely digital dashboard. The touchscreen is a bit much and probably you'll get used to it, but it's kind of annoying to use at first though. Uh, it's very hard to find what you're looking for in it. Very smooth gearbox. A gearbox that can be fairly handy to confuse at lower speeds, but it's very, very smooth. You can, sometimes you can just feel it going flip, flip, flip between two, two or three gears when it can't decide what it's doing. Um, but for the most part, it's spot on. So thank you very much for watching this little review. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button, click it now. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, you could also check out that Patreon link, uh, which is also below in the comments, and you can su support this channel in a way like no one else can. But until the next time, I will see you on the far side.